Any education apart from Jesus Christ is for us miseducation. And it produces not education nor an educated man, but a new race of barbarians who are today busily destroying their civilization. Humanistic education is the institutionalized love of death. Christian education, because it serves him who says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, is the love of life. This is the Love of Life podcast, Conversations with Jesse and Courtney. Go ahead and just say a few things real quick. I want to test the audio. We are testing the audio, and I'm eating a delicious frozen Greek yogurt. Is that good? Cookie dough bar. I like it. I really like to collect all the cookie dough towards the bottom. Yeah. It's like my last two bites is just like full of cookie dough. What are you reading lately? Well, too many things. I'm reading like you, which I don't like to do. Because I'm not getting through like any book because I have too many books. But the one that I am reading probably the most consistently the last two days is The Return of Prayers by Thomas Goodwin. And it's awesome. Puritan. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole thing's mind blowing. And it's this really little book. And I'm only like 16 pages in. But. Yeah, it's awesome. What I'm getting from it, at least right now, is that our prayers and God answering them is a form of communicating with God. And we all too often do not keep track of the prayers that God has answered. And so we feel like he's in our debt with unanswered prayers when really, like, there's this great credit of him answering our prayers no, we just don't stop thinking for and keep track of and go, oh my gosh, look at all these prayers he's answered. And what have we noticed lately? Like this morning you got out your journal. Yeah. My, <laughs> and it was crazy. It's crazy. So my journal starts in like 2019 <laughs> and I'm still in the same journal and I'm not even like halfway through it because I have a lot of kids and I don't <laughs> journal very often anymore, but so I have like prayers that I've listed out from 2019 and like we can look at them. We did look at them this morning and right. it was like, oh my gosh, God answered that. Oh, God answered that. Wow. God answered that. And some prayers he answered just last week that are even from those two years ago, but some he answered many months ago, sometimes, you know, years ago, but they're like all these things. That if I hadn't looked at them and then now like with this in mind, like I wrote the dates um, in, I wouldn't have tracked yeah. that. God answered those prayers. Yeah. That's awesome. And it makes me want to write down more of what we're praying now, which I did, and then keep better track. Like sometimes it's small things and we don't go, oh, that was a prayer and God really answered that. And since I read you some of this, it's cool because in the last couple of days, we've both like just randomly had like a light bulb, like, hey, that was an answered prayer. <laughs> that was a small thing or that was, you know. Whatever, but the way that the answer came was so directly an answer to something we've been praying. Right. And we would have missed it had and, we not been thinking about and it. And what we noticed this morning in you reading the specific prayers in your journal was that God in his own way, in his own time, answered every single one of them in the last two years. Yeah. Every single prayer that we prayed, the Lord answered. Yeah. And some of them were not in our own time, like when we needed to get paid from a past employer. Yep. That took a long time. A long time. In our that, estimation. In, in our estimation, that was something that we thought, hey, that should have come right away. And it should have been more timely. But it came in the Lord's time. All of them were answered. Every single prayer that you had. So there's that quote in this book, mm -hmm. uh, The Return to Prayers. By Thomas Goodwin. Little book, Puritan. And 
there's a quote in there that talks about, what was it? It was um, the prayers that oh. we pray, we need to, we need to remember, right? We need to take, okay, where are you going? we need to take stock into what we pray. Well, yeah, we need to keep track of his answers. Uh, well, that part's good. Well, let me see. There's a couple quotes in there specifically that you had me uh, yeah. read that I just thought were really, really good. Yeah, one I alluded to and what I talked about. Let me see if I can find that one. Oh, okay. This is one of the reasons that we keep track of our prayers. Uh, it's actually reason three on page 17. If God gives you an answer and you do not perceive it, you let God speak to you in vain. If two men walk together and the one, when he has spoken, does not listen to the response of the other, he slights him exceedingly. Um, this is in a different language. You read this line. This one? As non something. Uh, oh, Latin. So it's uh, as non responder pro convitio, convitio est. To not answer is contempt. So non attendra is not listen is con- uh, to not listen is contempt. Now our speaking to God by prayers and his speaking to us by answers is one great part of our walking with God. To study his dealings with us is to compare our prayers and his answers together, which are as dialogues between us and him. It is said of Samuel's prophecy. Not a word of it fell to the ground, 1 Samuel 3.19. So it may be said of our prayers, and so it ought to be said of God's answers. Not a word of them shall fall to the ground. That is, if you do not fail to observe them as Ben Hadadad's servants, I may have mispronounced that, are said to do concerning Ahab's words, by the same reason that you are to observe the fulfilling of God's promises, So you are to observe the fulfilling of your prayers. Now Solomon said, not one word failed of all he promised. 1 Kings 8, 56. Solomon made this observation by a particular survey of all that God had spoken and done. And he had found not one promise unperformed. (laughs) So there is the same principle of our observing the answers to our prayers. For prayers are simply putting promises into suit. Therefore, Solomon brought those words to confirm their faith in this truth, being grounded on a promise, namely that no prayers will fail. So he encouraged himself and others to diligence in prayer, being motivated by the certainty that God heard him. For he inferred upon it, saying, Let my words be near you, seeing you always perform your good word unto your people. 1 Kings 8.59 I actually don't think I've read that part yet. That wasn't what I was looking for. <laughs> you let me read that whole thing? Why did you do that? <laughs> well. Okay, well. It started off sounding familiar. <laughs> then no. But that was it really good. the God's name in vain part? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so it's reason number one. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney, you don't know. That was still good. And actually oh, sure. wasn't that cool because it. In it, he said, yes. no. every prayer, every not prayer. one. That's what you just said. Yes, in every prayer okay. that we prayed, the Lord heard. Yes. So, That's what we saw this morning, so okay. even better. So this is the part. Reason one says, because otherwise you take an ordinance of God in vain, which is to take God's name in vain, for he is the one with whom you deal in the ordinance. It would be a sign that you think your prayer is not an effectual means to attain the end for which God ordained it. It would be the same as secretly saying in your hearts, what profit have we if we pray to him? Job 21, 15. For if we use any means and expect the designated end, it is a sign that we think the means is useless to accomplish this end or the end. Every faithful prayer is ordained by God to be a means to obtain what we desire and pray for. And it is not put up in vain, but shall have an answer. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 
1 John 5, 14 through 15. It is true that God hears an enemy, but to hear with favor is the hearing meant in this verse. For example, we say of a favorite that he has the king's ear, and if a man is obstinate to a man's counsel, we say that he is not listening. So here, to hear is a gracious inclination to do the thing required. Thus, God's ears are said to be open to our prayers. It follows that if he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desire of him. As soon as we have prayed, we are said to have our petitions. I'll repeat that. As soon as we have prayed, we are said to have our petitions. That is, they are immediately granted, and we may be confident that they are assented unto by God. Although in regard to outward dispensation, the command for accomplishment has not yet come forth, so it hasn't already happened. Just as a petitioner is said to have his request when the word of the king goes forth, though it passes not the seal and is not signed for a good while after. Or when a wicked man sins, as soon as the sin is committed, the sentence from God goes forth. But the execution does not happen immediately, as the sentence against an evildoer is not presently executed. Ecclesiastes 8.11. Judgment is presently sentenced, as the words imply, but not immediately executed. So it is when a godly man prays. As soon as the prayer arrives in heaven, which is in an instant, the petition is granted. At the beginning of his prayer, the command came forth, Daniel 9.23, though the angel who brought the answer did not arrive until the end of the evening. Verse 21 the real accomplishment of it being deferred. So no prayer in respect of an answer to it is in vain. Where God has given a heart to speak, he has an ear to hear. Where God has given a heart to speak, he has an ear to hear. To not expect an answer is to take the ordinance of prayer in vain, which is to take God's name in vain. That's crazy. I know. That's cool. cool. About taking God's name in vain. I love this line. For it is an indicator that you think God's ear is heavy, that he cannot hear, or his hand is shortened, that he cannot save, or his heart is straightened, and his compassions are restrained, that he will not help. Thus you rob him of one of his most royal titles, whereby he designates himself the God who hears prayer. Psalm 65, 2. He is a God who is so regardful of his people that they are said to be near to the Lord day and night. 1 Kings 8, 59. They are all before him and he sets them in his view as we do letters from our friends, which we tape to our windows that we might remember to answer them. So the petitions of his people do not pass out of his sight till he sends an answer, which is here called speaking. Psalm 85, 8. Um, so it's like we make him unto an idol that can't hear and can't see if we think he doesn't hear with the intent to answer. Right. Um, what's the part, though, about it, like, being credit? You know what I'm talking about? No, you're reading the book. I know, but I feel like I had you read it. I've only read some sections. I haven't read a good portion of it today. I wonder, can we... There's a part of your... Oh, this. Okay. (laughs) What becomes of all those prayers we make? Back on page 11. How, when, and with what riches do they return? Many of the best believers who are diligent in prayer are found failing and deficient. They see no gain because they are careless and unobservant of their returns. For some, it may be through ignorance of the duty to watch for answers. Hello, that was me. (laughs) They are careful only regarding how to pray, not expecting to find any of their bread cast upon the waters. Ecclesiastes 11.1. Until that final day. Others, though many of their prayers come home after a few days and richly laden, yet through lack of skill to read those bills of exchange, which God often writes in an obscure character, let the answers lie unnoticed. Many, when voyages prove long, though to their great advantage when they do return, yet in the meantime, through discouragement, give up all as lost. 
most are commonly complaining that their adventures still miscarry and that little or nothing comes of all their prayers. They are negligent in keeping their book of accounts, which has caused them to lose that chief portion of comfort, which God has allotted us to live upon, namely the revenues of our prayers. By doing so, God is not only robbed of his glory, but wronged by standing still as a debtor in their accounts to many prayers, the return of which he has been creditor long ago. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. good. It's a really good book. I, I don't know. I guess I'd never thought about like writing down the answers to prayer. It's simple, but right. I don't know. Well, it's it's like so asking easy God to go a, to the next thing. Right. And it's like on. asking God, we pray. Uh, it's like asking God a question. God, will you, you know, give us our daily bread? And he does. Will you, you know, help us uh, with this issue or that? It's like a question. Mm -hmm. He provides the answer. And according to the word and according to Thomas Goodwin, the Puritan, he's saying that as soon as we pray it, the Lord has already given an answer, even though that answer doesn't come necessarily right away. Right. He already he already can hear us. He's already answering the prayer. Like what assurance we have. What assurance that we have. That he heard us. And right. that it's taken care of. It's done. It's, yeah, which is so cool. And not always in the way that we think. No. Or, you know. Anyway, it's not a, it's not a desire, just, just, to, just to clarify. It's not as if, oh, well, we, we pray for a million dollars. And guess what? God answers that. Or... We pray for luxury and a life of ease and, you right. know, no, no, not, not, not at all. We pray for, you know, a lot of these prayers in your journal are uh, for necessities or close to necessities or desires of our hearts. You know, there are certain desires that we have. We, we had a desire to move to where we could have some land where our kids could, you know, go out and play. And that would be really cool. And years ago, we had that desire, you know. There was a lot of question marks. How would we get to where we're at? How would he answer that prayer? And yet in his perfect time and in his perfect way, he did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we certainly thanked him and yeah. saw it as his hand and saw his providence all over it. But like to mark down, this was the specific prayer to see that and then go, and this is when and how he answered it. And to look at those together, like take those accounts that's something that I haven't done. I thank him when it happens, but I don't really connect it back to, wow, I prayed that. And then he answered. And this is the, I don't view the dialogue. Yeah. I don't go back and review it. Which, yeah. Yeah. That's, should. that's totally new. Yeah. That understanding that it truly is a, that it really is a dialogue. Yeah. Like, you can go back and look at pages and pages of this script. Yeah. Of, you pouring your heart out. And, you know, sometimes these prayers are for spiritual things, for truth, for wisdom. Yeah. And God gives those. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, you know, he quantifies it in this book, talking about anything according to his will. Right. So that's where it's, like, not just the, oh, a life of ease or this great thing. Like, when we're truly desiring more of him and his perfect will for our life and to know him more. The things, sometimes the things are needed and sometimes the things are like, we don't even need the things. It's not even, it's not primarily about the things. Yeah. We take our needs to him and yes, even our, our heart's desires. But I guess within the context of knowing that he knows best and we really only want what he has for us and what will help us know him more, love him better, that kind of thing. Right. And I think too, as the Lord has been uh, showing us, well, this is a different topic, but through some of the post eschatology, just the lordship of Christ in all of life over all of things, that he has all authority. It really has helped us just with even whatever prayer it is. Like, well, nothing is outside of his control. Nothing is outside of his power or ability to answer any prayer that we may have. Um, but especially even like the little things, you know, like today when we were walking and I thought, oh man, like the whole trash can issue that we had, which was just crazy. You know, it was just like a yeah. little thing. It's kind of like I've heard some pastors say, you know, God even cares if you're praying and you're in a parking lot and you need to find a parking space. Like he, he cares about the little things. If a, if a sparrow doesn't fall to the ground without his knowledge, 
He knows the very hairs of all of our heads and all of all of the little intricate little details. Then he's then he's very detail oriented. <laughs> he has to be. Um, so with those little details that we bring to him, like oh, Lord, can you you know fix this little issue here of the you know the trash can issue? Like all of a sudden we were stood there and we prayed for oh, five minutes later. Here comes the trash man. Yeah, just that you know. I mean, yeah. little things, but are very cool indicators of his providence. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It makes me think though, too, the attitude we need to have when he says no mm -hmm. or not right now, or sometimes very inconvenient things happen. Mm -hmm. Like if the trash can thing had been a bigger deal and you'd had to call, like, I don't know, his hands in that too. So yeah. like being thankful and seeing, what we deem as that inconvenience or a delay or whatever as being from him and there being good in us, it's a chance to die to self, have the fruit of the spirit cultivated. Yeah. And it's truly seeing all things from his hand for our good and for his glory and being able to trust him. Right. Not be flustered or, you know, lose it or, you know, whatever. Or pout or complain. Like... Yeah, because it's not like oh here's this magic formula you just pray and God will do whatever you say. No, like, but it is keeping track of His faithfulness and giving Him the proper due in regards to His faithfulness. Right. Yeah, and then it's very um, it's cool then to keep a record like what you've done through your journal, writing down the specific needs, desires, prayers that we've had. And then to look back on them and to be to see that record of his faithfulness. Yeah, I wish it's I'd very been doing cool. It I wish we longer. had been doing it for years and years. We, you yeah. know, now it's moving forward. It's like we we needed to do this yeah. more, more so yeah. than just in the past, you know, two years or so. Okay, so you've got a little section here that, sorry to say this uh, out loud, but your handwriting oh, is terrible. is just you know a little difficult. So you're going to have to read this, but I, can you read right here, this section to here? Because I thought, I asked you, I said, who wrote that? And you're like, oh, I did. I'm like, well, come on, really? You wrote? It's so good. Which, of course, I, you know, I'm not surprised. But it just, it's so good that I thought, oh, what Puritan said this? <laughs> can we start over here? Uh, I think so. Right okay. there, maybe? All right. Um, the Lord has continued to provide enough work, and we are grateful. Still asking for pay from a company and for a van, but trusting the Lord for his provision above all. About so many things, circumstances, the future, our concerns, a solution. To us, it is unknown. To him, it is known. To us, it is uncertain. To him, it is certain. To us, it is insecure. To him, it is secure. To us, it is out of our control. To him, it is in his control. And so we rest assured in him and his steadfast love, goodness, and grace towards us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, just like the confidence comes from knowing he knows it, he has it. Like, we don't rest in just oh, everything works out it's fine we rest in the god who knows everything mm -hmm. who's able to do anything and who knows what's best for us and yeah. does all things right the security comes from resting in him okay so how'd that first episode go was this pretty good was this a success <laughs> i don't know yes <laughs> 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 i mean it still feels kind of awkward Still feels awkward. Okay. Yeah. And like, do I really want to say like some of those specifics we were praying for? I would have rather started it with so many things. Circumstances, the future, our concerns, a solution. Okay. All right. We're or something. I don't know. We're, we're still on. This is still. This is This practice. is still going. Oh, no. This, this is real. No, this is practice. This is episode one. No, this is Episode practice. one is on prayer. Jesse. There is no practice. This is practice. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's practice. <laughs> This is this is trial by fire. We just jumped in. Congratulations. This is the first episode. No. <laughs> yes. That was not the way this was supposed to go. Okay, this is the way it went. 
Thank you for listening to the Love of Life podcast, Conversations with Jesse and Courtney. It is our duty through our schools to create a new one, a God-centered one. We are told in Proverbs 8, verses 35 and 36, For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death.